I believe most of you are familiar with the film Gattaca, starring Ethan Hawke, Jude Law, and Uma Thurman. Now, I personally think this film is not very good because the premise is absolutely ridiculous, as in off the charts ridiculous. And if you haven't seen the film, well, I'm sorry, I'm going to have to spoil some things. I will not reveal the vast majority of the details. But the gist of it is, this is a hypothetical future. We don't know exactly when. And essentially, all human beings are pre-screened and essentially genetically engineered in advance to make sure that they are functional and can fit into a paradigm within society. And Ethan Hawke's character, Vincent, is the product of two parents who decided to conceive him naturally. And it turns out he has all these defects. And when he's born, the doctor says he only has about 30 plus years to live. And he ends up being a janitor, but eventually becomes an astronaut through duplicitous means, blah, 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 blah. And he also has a congenital heart condition. And he manages somehow to defy these astronomical odds, which is the point of the film, that ultimately if you put your heart into something, no pun intended, you can do it even if you have a congenital heart condition. Now, this is a society where everyone is pre-planned, basically. And that's kind of the point of the film. It's not a good film, as I said, for the reasons I cited at the premises. But if you want to check it out, you probably should. It's one of those classics that you probably should have watched at least once. But you might be asking yourself why I'm talking about this. Well, as bad as the scenario in Gattaca seems, what I'm about to talk about today is a lot worse, potentially. You see... There are many people out there sounding the alarm bells on all manner of issues. It could be climate change, it could be inflation. The biggest one these days is probably AI. Everyone and his cousin has an opinion on AI, whether they're informed or not. And it's probably good to sound the alarm bells on any number of these issues because we just don't know the exact seriousness, gravity of each of these respective issues ultimately. And a variety of views and opinions are welcome. But one of the things that I see going on that I follow a little bit that is not having the alarm bell sounded on is this matter of basically genetic engineering. Now, we're not there yet, and I'll go through the steps, but I want you to imagine a society similar to Gattaca, but not everyone benefits from it. Basically, a society where there are a lot of Vincents, and unlike a film, a lot of Vincents are going to fail. Now, how does this work? At this stage, genetic engineering is probably a science fiction fantasy, at least in the details. But there are precursors to it. There are technologies such as CRISPR-Cas9, which literally allows you to cut into DNA and essentially shut off the targeted gene. The process is complicated, but probably not interesting or necessary to be explained here. But the point is here that when it comes to simple genetic cause and effect, monogenetic issues that involve only one gene, then technology such as CRISPR-Cas9, which is basically some of the best gene editing out there, allows you to perform this, effectively genetically engineering human beings. The problem here, of course, is that the vast majority of illnesses, and certainly very much especially with complex human traits such as intelligence, personality traits, neuroticism, conscientiousness, and a host of other things, well, usually there are hundreds if not thousands of genes involved, so-called polygenic traits. And so the technology Whilst in theory could be there, the knowledge is lacking, and so the technology couldn't be implemented even if people wanted to, and they generally don't. That's a separate discussion. But generally speaking, we're in an era of pre-genetic engineering. That's how I would describe it. And in this pre-genetic engineering era, people are using other forms of technology. The biggest one is embryo screening and embryo selection. So with embryo screening and embryo selection, how it works is you have a base of a whole bunch of embryos, sometimes dozens, if not hundreds. And before the embryos are implanted, you take small cell samples from these embryos, and then you run them through certain tests, usually in the form of something called polygenic risk score. So polygenic risk score is basically a test or a tool that uses genomic information to assess a person's chances, potential person in this case, of having or developing certain medical conditions. And it's a statistical calculation based on a number of genetic factors does not take the environment other things into account. Now, usually this test, the polygenic risk score, is used for the sake of preventing illnesses, but it can be used for a lot more. You can test for educational attainment, which is then often used as a proxy for intelligence. It's not the same thing. It's not one-to-one, but it's somewhat close. You're not as yet allowed to do this. And there are a lot of companies out there offering these services. 
And this is sort of pre-genetic engineering. It's not the same thing as gene editing or any other thing related to that. This is working off of probabilities to optimize the results of your offspring. Now, you might be asking the question, why does it matter that we even talk about this? Not many people are, after all. It's a conversation that's usually had in only select circles. I'm not part of those circles. I just have an interest in it. But here's the thing. The people who make use of embryo selection and polygenic risk score screenings in order to get better results for their offspring, to optimize the results for their offspring, are wealthy people who probably already have a lot of genetic advantages, high IQ, high conscientiousness, generally speaking, good health. And so what they're doing is they're adding layers upon this. So whatever weaknesses they might have had potentially in their offspring, this is a way of circumventing it, even if it's not perfect. And although it seems like we're relatively far off from proper genetic engineering, it is only a matter of time. It is a question of when rather than if. And the people that are availing themselves of this technology, the embryo selection and the PRS stuff, they would, they would love if the genetic engineering technology were already available right now because they want designer babies at the end of the day. Now, let's go back to the Gattaca scenario. Yes, it is a world of designer babies, but basically everyone, as far as we understand the context of this fictional universe, gets access to designer babies. It is a near universal in the society, hence why Vincent, the anomaly, is so weird and so out of place because he was conceived of naturally and has some serious issues when it comes to his genes. Now, there are people out there that are very open about this. There's a couple on YouTube called Malcolm and Simone Collins. They run a channel called Based Camp. They talk about all sorts of things. But they're most infamous or famous for the desire to have at least seven children, possibly 12, with his wife, Simone Collins, saying she will have children until her uterus withers away. And they produce all these children, every single one of them, through very expensive, difficult, painful embryo selection and polygenic risk score screening. Now, it goes without saying that they're very wealthy. Malcolm, in particular, comes from great wealth, and he's also obviously not dumb. And although nominally they make the claim that they're just interested in natalism as a principle, they want everyone to have a lot of babies, I think there's something much more sinister under the surface. Because as always, pay attention to their actions, not their words. They've bought two very expensive properties that no normal people could afford in order to raise their massive family. And on top of that, why are they so gung-ho on the pre-genetic engineering, i.e. embryo selection and PRS stuff? Well, because they want to optimize the results for their children. Here's the thing. Everyone, ideally, would like to optimize the results for their offspring. So basically, Malcolm and Simone Collins are a type of elite. There are many types of elites, but in this context, when I'm talking about elites, I'm talking about wealthy, high IQ individuals who have a great number of advantages over the average person, to say nothing of the below average person. Now, unfairness is baked into the equation of life and, as a consequence, baked into the equation of society. But if you get too much unfairness, things begin to unravel. There are many, many other wealthy elites out there using this technology to benefit themselves and their offspring. They're just not very open about it. They don't talk a lot about it. The vast majority of them are not like Malcolm and Simone Collins, who I guess you could credit for being honest and open about what they're trying to do. And the question is, as these people pursue essentially designer babies in the future, what happens to the rest of us, the common man, the common folk? They get left behind. Now, normally, in evolutionary terms and genetic terms, there is a correction mechanism for this. And this is called regression towards the mean. Because normally, almost everyone who is an exceptional human being is the byproduct of randomness, genetic recombination, things that are unpredictable, things you couldn't have predicted. So it was observed in the 19th century, for example, the first time this observation was made, that tall parents tend to have shorter children on average, and that hyper-intelligent parents tend to have children that are somewhat less smart. It's basically a principle of if you have an extreme random event, which a lot of genetic exceptionalism is, you could argue, then the next event that occurs is less likely to be extreme 
because that's just how averages work out. That's just how things tend to be. So getting back to the genetic engineering, embryo selection elites, you end up in a difficult situation because normally you have regression to the mean as a correction mechanism for extremes, positive genetic anomalies, outliers, things that result in really, really good outcomes for people. But if you make use of gene editing technology or even embryo selection, you're circumventing that mechanism. You're intervening to either probabilistically or in the future directly stop regression to the mean as an event in order to have perpetually optimized offspring. Now, I want you to imagine when this technology is in the hands of only wealthy and only elite people who already have many genetic advantages, and they further optimize their children, and their children are not subjected to principles such as regression to the mean, and the rest of the population is, what holds them in check? They're going to take off into the stratosphere. And as I've mentioned many times, even though the film isn't good, Elysium, the film with Matt Damon, where the elites literally live in orbit to the Earth in massive space stations the size of cities, living near-perfect lives, where 99% of humanity lives in squalor, terror, agony, and misery. That is the future that we are probably heading toward. Of course, there probably won't be city-sized space stations in orbit to the Earth, but the principle is there. Because the elites don't care about you. They don't care about the common person out there. They really don't, much less the less-than-common person. And so what this is going to lead to is a type of speciation event where elites who already had advantages are going to have so many advantages that they far outstrip the average person who is still bound by normal genetic laws and procedures such as regression to the mean. And the elites already don't care about the rest of us. What do you think they're going to do when they have perfectly designed babies in the future or even halfway perfectly designed babies and normal people can't compete? Now it goes without saying... This is a very serious issue because, at least in the universe of Gattaca, this technology seemed to be, based on little we can gather from the film, universally accessible, distributed to everyone if they wanted it. This technology may or may not be universally distributable to people. And the difference between something like a cell phone, which took a good decade or something to become really popular and accessible for most people, and designer babies who are given huge head starts and advantages over normal people is night and day. It's not the same thing. Average people will very unlikely be able to play catch up because human genetic advantages are not like cell phones. So I say this as a counter to the market correction when average Joe Schmo gets access to genetic engineering technology. Why don't we talk about this? Well, it goes without saying that it's related to things like mustache man and an illegitimate history of pseudoscience and abuse of human beings. So I get that. But on the other hand, I don't think we can afford to ignore the powerful effects of genes. They determine, quite literally, life outcomes more than anything else. I don't have a good solution for this, because even if you wanted to invoke, say, government regulation, it wouldn't matter. We're all familiar with the concept of capital flight. Wealthy elites, if they are bound and limited by the government and prevented from using this technology, will just go someplace else to countries where they're not limited, and they will get their designer babies done and manufactured elsewhere. So this is a real ticking time bomb, one that people continue to ignore at their own peril. Yes, we hear all about climate change and AI and this and that, but I think this particular issue of genetic engineering, designer babies, embryo selection, etc., etc., is as much an existential threat as any of these other things, and perhaps even more so. It's just that nobody talks about it, and it needs to be talked about. Because here's the thing at the end of the day. Life and society is shot through by copious amounts of genetic inequality. You don't want even more genetic inequality than there already is. If you produce even more genetic inequality, life and circumstances will get more miserable for the vast majority of people. And conversely, even better for the small slice of elites that never cared about you to begin with. And what do you think they're going to do when you're so far beneath them? in terms of cognition, in terms of psychological traits, hell, potentially even in terms of looks. I don't even want to contemplate that. So this is me, at the end of the day, sounding the alarm bells on this issue. I think this issue is of paramount concern. I think it is as important as AI, if not more important. And people need to talk about it as individuals, as a society. And if I were a conspiratorial thinker, which I tend not to be, 
I'd almost guess that the elites don't want us talking about this because they're doing this all surreptitiously behind closed doors. They want these technologies to be developed. They want to take advantage of it. Whether it's in the context of the U.S. or different countries, it doesn't matter. If they're super rich, they'll fly there. They'll use it. Whilst the rest of us are left to flounder and founder in genetic squalor. This is not a recipe for a bright future. That's all I can say. Anyway, as always, thank you for tuning in. Many special thanks to my patrons on Patreon and donors on PayPal. You guys are the best. You guys are the lifeblood of the channel. Without you, there is no thinking ape. Thank you so much indeed, gentlemen. Really appreciate it. As for everybody else, if you can leave a like, comment, share, and subscribe. Hopefully it helps out the channel. Who knows? Be much appreciated. Until the next time, if I'm still alive, I'll check you out then. May the gods truly watch over you. Bye-bye for now. If you like this video, please like, share, and subscribe. And if you enjoy my content, please consider making a donation or becoming a patron. Thanks for watching.